Praise God. We are so grateful that you're here today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful that you have tuned in today. I want to encourage you uh, to make sure you invite a friend. You'll see a button that pops up there. That is a special button for you to send to your social media or text it to your uh, family and friends. I want to encourage as many people to join us today as we begin to uh, worship and, and share God's praise. We want to make sure that you know uh, this is the opportunity for us to meet together as family and we are so grateful that we got the family together. But I have one question. Tell me, how are you going to vote? Are you going to early vote? Are you going to uh, uh, vote by mail? Or are you going to wait to November the 2nd? In the comments, let me know how are you going to vote. Uh, we want to see uh, how everybody's going to be engaged in this process. We're definitely looking forward to making sure everybody get out to vote. I want you to take a listen to our county clerk. Take a listen to this. Good morning, church family. I'm Chris Hollins, your Harris County Clerk. As early voting kicks off in this historic election, I want to take the time to encourage you to make a plan to vote early. Early voting starts on October 13th and runs through October 30th. And there are 120 different early voting centers for you to choose from. You also have more voting options than ever before. You can vote from your car at 10 drive through voting locations, including Toyota Center, and NRG Arena. And you can vote at a time that's convenient for you with 24 hour voting at seven locations on October 29th. As a reminder, this is the first presidential election where you can vote from any voting center in Harris County. So visit harrisvotes.com locations to find the voting centers nearest you, including their estimated wait times. To find out more information, including your sample ballot, visit us at harrisvotes.com and follow us at Harris Votes on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a blessed week and see you at the polls. Thank you, County Clerk Hollins, for blessing us in your leadership and, and making sure that every vote is, is counted. We're so grateful for uh, your leadership in making sure we do all the things that we possibly can in one of the ways we want to partner with uh, the rest of the Third War churches is we're, we're a part of the Souls to the Polls initiative. And if you would like a ride to the polls, specifically those who are living in Third War, if you need a ride to the polls for early voting, please hit the button below. You'll be on a list. We'll follow up with you so that you can definitely be uh, a, a part of the social poll. And if you need a ride, we're going to make sure that people who can make their way to Trinity have an opportunity to get to the polls so that we can get as many votes as possible. And I want to encourage all of you to make sure you reach out to your family. I'm telling you to call those cousins. You know those cousins, the ones that you haven't talked to for a while. Please call your cousins and make sure that you check to see if everybody is exercising and implementing their voting strategy. We want to make sure we get as many of our family members to the polls. So thank you ahead of time for that. In the chat, I want to encourage you to answer this question. How are you going to vote? Are you going to vote? by ballot? Are you going to vote by, I mean, I should, are you going to vote by mail? Are you going to early vote? Are you going to wait till election day? Which strategy are you going to do? Tell me uh, in your comments right now, we want to make sure we find out what is the strategy that you're going to use. We want to see if we can poll and see how many people are going to vote whatever type of way. So thank you for your comments. Uh, 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 we're so grateful for you sharing those things. I want to also, at this time, thank you for being generous to the church. We want you to know that we are grateful that we've been able to uh, take care of the, the things that's going on in the church. All of our apportionments been paid. We're getting ready for our charge conference, which will be October the 24th at 3 o'clock. It's a Saturday. 
And, and if you would like to RSVP for that, hit the link below. We want to encourage you to make sure that uh, we get the link to you. We, we're, the, the, the district will provide us that. We just want to make sure that uh, we get as many people who would like to participate in the CHARGE conference. And for those of you who may be new to the church, Every year in um, United Methodist Church, uh, churches have what they call a charge conference. Basically, we're looking at the budget. We're looking at the year, and we're saying what we plan to do uh, this in the, in, the, in the next year uh, so that we can make sure that we uh, approve that in March 4th. And, and if you would like to uh, uh, participate in that, uh, just RSVP. We'll make sure we send you the link. And all those things are, are very helpful, and one of the things that we, we can celebrate by your generosity that empowered us not only to pay apportionments, which supports the global church, but your support of what we're doing here now, every week. My heart is just warmed by our ability to provide space for the kids who are walking through our doors in and how they are eager to learn and, and how all of the workers and everybody and the volunteers are there just to make sure that we help advance the kingdom by education uh, in our community. And we're so grateful for your generosity uh, that helps us keep the lights on, that helps us provide everything that these kids need to, to make sure that we can show how much we love them in for many of you, are your, you, you have already mailed your uh, our giving to the church. We're so grateful. Uh, for those of you who are giving online, uh, you, you see the button there. Uh, just hit that button, and it will take you to our giving page. And for some of you who want to text to give, want to make sure whatever option that you use, we're so grateful that you're supporting the church at this time. It definitely makes a difference. Uh, for those who know of people who are sick and, and who need to be on a shut-in list, the sick and shut-in list, please let us know. Uh, it's so important uh, that we find out that uh, those who, who, who are hurting or those who, who need some extra help or extra prayers, you will see a link there. Please uh, fill that information out. We want to make sure we pray for those. You see some names scrolling there. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to pray for those who uh, our names are listed on our sick and shut-in list. We want to keep people lifted up at this time. Your prayers make a difference, and we want to get as many people as possible to pray. We definitely want to continue to pray for those who are experiencing the aftermath of this hurricane. We, 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 we are just... Our heart goes out to all those who are hurting uh, because of the, the, this, the, this hurricane that is just causing uh, all type of damage all throughout the Gulf Coast. And we want to make sure we keep our uh, neighbors in prayer. Amen. So let us pray at this time. Father, we are so grateful right now that you give us the opportunity to, to, to just spend some time with you this morning, Lord. We're so grateful for the opportunity to fellowship with family. And, 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 and right now, Lord, we ask that we extend our hands toward those who are hurting, those who have been in harm's way, those who had to evacuate, those whose lives have turned upside down and they don't know if they have a home. And, and Father, right now, we just ask that your grace and your mercy covers, covers all those who are hurting right now. Lord, we, 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 we hear their uh, cries, we see their tears, and Father, we feel their pain. And right now, we just pray on behalf of our neighbors and our loved ones and our family members who've been displaced because of the storm. Right now, we just want to make sure we go over and above to, to lift their names up high. And God, as we lift up the concerns of, of, of our community and the needs that we have, we just want to make sure that we turn our eyes toward you and we trust and believe that our help comes from the Lord and we hear your voice telling us the things that we must do 
to continue to serve and glorify you at the same time so that we may be in, out of harm's way. Right now, Lord, we just pray a blessing, uh, a hedge of protection around our community, around the, the, the evil one who's doing all type of destructive things and, and causing so many uh, uh, people to turn against fellow brothers and sisters. And right now, Lord, we just want to cover each other in prayer as we seek to glorify you in all what we do. Father, we, we ask that you supernaturally move in this time, move in this space so that we can continue to glorify you in all that we do. And right now, Lord, we want to pray for the preacher. Father, we pray that the word goes forth, that it convicts, it converts, it transforms. We pray that the word can, can transform our hearts, transform our minds, so that we can experience a fresh encounter with your grace, with your mercy, with your love. And right now, we, we pray for Pastor Hilda as she prepares to, 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 go, to declare this word. May it touch the heart and change it forevermore. We ask this in the name that's above all names. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, welcome. It is time for the word of God. And I'm excited about the word and what the Lord has to say to us. Turn with me to our scripture reading this morning, which comes from the Gospel of Luke. Luke 9, 23. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible. Luke 9, 23. And it reads, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During this pandemic, one of the things that I have missed most is an invitation. You know that invitation to dinner with girlfriends or that invitation to brunch or an invitation to an anniversary or birthday party. For some, the invitation to go out on a first date with someone you are smitten with. The invitation to be part of a team or to join a particular club or social group. See, invitations make us feel special. They make us feel wanted and accepted. They make us feel included. However, invitations can also make us feel excluded, rejected and an outsider. You know the one, that one you were counting on or hoping for, but never received. The concept of an invitation was not foreign to God or Jesus. Both extended invitations and both were invited throughout the Bible. And scripture invitations were delivered by God and Jesus, or by messengers sent by God or Jesus, or by witnesses who had seen what God and Jesus had done. See, an invitation is an act of inviting the calling or requesting of a person's company to draw by hope. In scripture, the word come is used to denote an invitation. You remember the Samaritan woman in John 4, 29, where she invites others to come see a man who told me everything I did. And Jesus invites Matthew in Matthew 4, 19, come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Jesus invites us in Matthew 11, 28, 30 to come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
God sends this invitation in Isaiah 55, 1 through 3, when he says, Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come and buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. And then Revelations 22, 17 delivers this invitation. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. See, the word of God is all about inviting us into a relationship through love, forgiveness, and grace. A relationship where love is unconditional, forgiveness is lived out daily, and grace is sufficient. A relationship found through Jesus Christ. This relationship that's formed from our love for God and our love in God. But there is a difference. See, this love separates fans from followers. See, fans love God for how he makes them feel. Whereas followers, they want God to know he is loved and they are concerned about how he feels. See, fans pursue what God can give and followers pursue what they can give God. Because of this, narrow is the way which leaded to life that Jesus came to bring us. See, fans bring the world into the word, wanting God to bless it and you and me to follow it. They want to hold on to a part of God and a part of the world. They are prohibiting themselves from experiencing all of God because no one can operate in two kingdoms at once. And unfortunately, the broad way many people follow seeking to have a relationship with God is lived through religion. See, religion is man's attempt to make himself acceptable to a holy God. And God is clear about the way to him, and that is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. A narrow way becomes few because few are willing to accept God's way even though his way is easy. Fans will always find it difficult to find the narrow way because they are looking for the popular way, the most traveled way, the most convenient way, the shortest way, the most familiar way. Yet God is specific and clear that the way is through love, love that leads Jesus, that led Jesus to the cross to die. See, the better way of the way of love is the more excellent way, or God's way. See, God demonstrated that we can give without love, but we cannot love without giving. God describes his love through his son, and what draws a man to God is agape love. See, that's that self-giving love through Jesus Christ's birth, death, and resurrection to freely respond to his invitation of love. See, agape love is a deeper understanding of love that comes solely from God. Whenever we seek to obey God through accomplishment, power, or action, when love is missing, the act in question becomes vain, selfless, and fruitless. See, love never begins with I. Many a road have been traveled in the name of Jesus. However, God has determined there is only one way, one way to liberty and freedom, one way to joy and peace, one way to what is true, and one way to a relationship that leads to life. It is by invitation to come. See, fans know all about these diverse roads. They choose them daily for comfort and convenience. Fans will divert from a path of change and the unfamiliar and uncomfortable. Fans are okay with church as long as it does not require them to reroute. 
These roads consume their thoughts, their resources, and their lives. See, fans don't mind doing what God commands because they know a lot about church and protocol and rules. Fans prefer to follow rules and rituals. See, they are easy because they are objective instead of subjective. Yet God desires followers. Followers that are driven by their love for him, love that causes them to passionately pursue him, even when they don't understand where he's going or what he's doing. Following Jesus can be crazy and unorthodox and against everything the world believes. See, love separates a fan from a follower. Deuteronomy 30, 16 tells us, God commands us to love the Lord our God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that we may live and multiply. Have you ever found yourself following a set of rules only to realize you were following the wrong ones? I remember many days following my own set of rules and directions in the name of God. And they ultimately led to a dead religion, a religion that profited nothing but heartache, a headache, and a hard backside. See, many of us have been following rules and not the path to righteousness. And God is not impressed with our rituals, but our righteousness. See, Jesus loves us beyond rules, and he left a word of love and grace. There is a story of a man whose daughter had gone astray. And the man lovingly tells of his daughter and all that they did by taking her to church, teaching her the rituals, holding fast the traditions. Yet he is heartbroken that she is separated from it all. And the man later pondered in his heart, what if we had taught her more about Christ and less about church? Many of us know a lot about the church, but only just enough about Christ. We know he died, was buried, and rose on the third day for our sins. You see, followers seek to know more about Christ, beyond what he did. See, doing for Christ is easier than knowing Christ. See, knowing him requires us to daily pick up our cross and follow him. Knowing him requires love beyond infatuation. Love is more than a subject, it's a solution. And when love is in action, things are made right. For instance, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Through love, things were made right between God and man. We went from darkness to light and from death to to life. We have all done some pretty crazy things in faith, hope, and love. Yet some of us struggle to do what is necessary for the greatest of these, which is love. There's a joke about a woman accompanying her husband to the doctor's office. And after his checkup, the doctor called the wife into the office alone. And he said, your husband is suffering from a very severe disease combined with a horrible stress. And if you don't do the following, your husband's disorder will surely be terminal. Number one, each morning, fix him a healthy breakfast. Be pleasant. Make sure he's in a good mood. Two, for lunch, make him a nutritious meal he can take to work. Three, for dinner, prepare him an especially nice meal for him. Four, don't burden him with chores, as this could further his stress. Five, don't discuss your problems with him. It will only make him stress worse. Six, try to relax your husband in the evening by wearing lingerie or giving him plenty of back rubs. Seven, Encourage him to watch some type of team sporting event on television. And lastly, most importantly, 
Make love with your husband several times a week and satisfy his every whim. If you can do these for the next 10 months to a year, I think your husband will regain his strength and health. On the way home, the husband asks his wife, what did the doctor say? And she looks at him lovingly and replies, you're going to die. <laughs> I believe we can all agree that the wife definitely did not fulfill the prescription in her hearing. The wife is an example, though, of people today gathered for worship. Just like the wife, they listen to the words of the healer with admiration and respect. They not only commend him for his knowledge, yet like the wife, they have a hard time accepting the words because they require more than what they're willing to give. Sacrificial love has transforming power. Genuine love is volatational rather than emotional. The person who truly loves does so because of a decision to love. The person has made a commitment by loving whether or not the loving feeling is present. See, true love is not a feeling by which we are overwhelmed. It is a committed, thoughtful decision, one that God desires that we consider daily. If we discover that we have five minutes left to say all we wanted to say or to tell someone we love them, I believe every telephone cell tower would be occupied by people calling other people to tell them that they love them. Question. Why wait until the last five minutes? If 2020 has taught us anything, it has taught us that now God has given. Now you have the gift of life by grace. Now is the acceptable time of, of the Lord. Now you can move toward wholeness and healing. Now is the moment to maximize. Now is the time to let love win. Do it now, for the invitation may not come tomorrow. If we're going to honor Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're going to have to commit to doing what he said and going where he leads. Scripture speaks truth into our life, but we must choose to obey it. Just as surely as Joseph had to change his plans, Moses had to realize obedience was better than sacrifice, and King David had to submit to the king. And we all have to choose our way. But God promises us two things if we choose to follow him. One, he will never leave us or abandon us. Two, our lives will make a difference to those around us and to the kingdom. Richard C. Haverson says, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do to make God love you less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite, and perfect. Today, I challenge you to think of the billions of people who have been blessed by their decision to follow Christ. That the cost of what they left is nothing compared to the reward of following him. The grace of Jesus is reaching out to you this morning. Yes, you, you who are watching. His invitation is to all those who are tired and weary, tired of pretending to be more than you are, worn out and burdened by the guilt and fear of religion. And he says, come unto him. Come to him, all who are weary, heavy burdened and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Sisters and brothers, God has an open invitation, an invitation that is for now. For tomorrow is not promised. I know many of us know that we have been taught to fear God, but few of us have been taught to love him. We have been taught that God is a rule keeper, and we've tried to keep all the rules, 
try to be good, hoping that God will love us. Well, I have good news for you, just for you. Jesus says, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He who follows me will find everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you.